All right, people. I don't know who's in the house, but we're about to have a great show. I have a very talented gentleman that I get to sit down and have a chit chat with tonight. And I'm excited about it because he is involved in more music than I realized, you know, so I'm excited about that. I'm going to get this intro going and then we'll get started. You are now tuned in to Vibin' in the D with Lili, the podcast dedicated to the creatives of Detroit. Now let's get into this vibe session. So the individual that I'm going to be talking to tonight, his name is Deshaun Jones. He is a producer, a musician. He plays the saxophone. And when I say he played the saxophone, <laughs> he played that saxophone good. <laughs> I just, you know, my first time actually hearing him live was back in 28, was it 20? No, 2019. He had um, a, a, a thing down at um, Aretha's Jazz Cafe called No Cap Mondays. And Angela Davis was part of that show. And I went down there and I was just like, this band is tripping me out, you know? I just have to keep Blistex on hand because I be my lips be drying out from being, you know, blown away so much. So let's go ahead and introduce to the podcast Deshaun Jones. What's up? What up? What up? How's everybody feeling? Y'all good? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you you uh, accepting my invitation. Oh man, this is a wonderful invitation to accept indeed. Um, I've been following you and your work and it's wonderful and I'm glad that I get a chance to sit down and rap with you, so. I appreciate that. Yeah. So before we get into anything, how are you doing? I mean, all things considered, you know, I'm in good health, my family's in good health, so that's all that matters. And, um, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with people that are, either going through a lot right now or that have lost loved ones because, you know, music and, you know, all that stuff aside, this has been a rough year for all of us, you know. Definitely. But, um, all things considered, I, I would say that I'm, I'm in good shape. That's How about saying. you? How are you doing? Well, I thank you for asking. I am, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I was uh, having a little paranoid attacks earlier because I was sneezing and coughing, but I think it's an allergy, you know. You know, when you get older, your body changes and, you know, oh, you, yeah. might, you might not have been allergic to, to chicken wings and then now you're allergic to chicken wings. But I bet not be allergic to chicken Don't wings. Don't so speak do that. that evil on me. Ever. So you put that, talk about till you do right by me, everything you think about. <laughs> no, nah, don't do that to me. I need I'm sorry. I have no shame. Nah. But yeah, it's been crazy though. 2020 has been a roller coaster. It has honestly, it has. man. Emotional roller coaster, spiritual, financial, like hey, whatever you can, whatever category you want to choose, it's been something. So, um, but you know what? I'm happy to be here now. I'm definitely excited to, you know, talk about a few things with you on your show and uh, maybe take my mind off of the madness. I know, right. That's what yeah. I, I look forward to doing these shows because that's one of the things it does for me. It, it takes my mind off of the madness because I have madness on the daily with my job. You know, the, okay. people, the people that come in there, they, they cause the madness. So um, this is this is great. But I when did you when did you get into music? Like, um, hmm. I guess I've always been involved in music some way or another um definitely started in church you know it just that's just how it starts <laughs> right then, uh from there um picked up saxophone about 12 13 and it's just been a steady sort of progression you know evolution you know from saxophone to maybe messing with keys a little bit to you know now learning a little bit about production and you know, and then you go to school for music and all that stuff. And it, it just, it, this is like a lifelong study. And I would say like music for me didn't get serious until I met Marcus Belgrave, the late, great Marcus Belgrave, uh, trumpeter, 
extraordinaire who who mentored me very closely um probably for i don't know mm, let me think or maybe oh four yeah about oh four all the way up until he passed away mm -hmm. and um yeah he showed me the ropes this is somebody who has md for marvin gay this is somebody who was yeah. top call for Ray Charles. This is the guy who's considered to be the ambassador to the rest of the world for the city of Detroit, especially when you talk about the jazz, uh, the jazz and music scene. And he just, he taught me so much, man. It wasn't just about music. I mean, we definitely spent many hours going through changes and how to read music and how to yeah. transpose and how to interpret music. But I swear to, I, I, I feel like the majority of my time with him was spent talking about life and just you know gaining wisdom from his experiences um you know learning very much uh what to do mm -hmm. and being taught what not to do okay. you know that, that was the kind of mentor he was he always led by example and then you know you fast forward from marcus belgrave to mike banks underground resistance mm -hmm. uh who i'm a very close collaborator with and um, you know, I still have my studio at Submerge right there off of 3000 East Grand Boulevard, you know, down the street from Old Town. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it's like it's a it's a lot of inspiration, a lot of wisdom and a lot of good people I've come across in my uh, years and career as a musician. That's what's up. Now, I'm, I'm late in the house, but we're going to go back right quick to the night that um, you had the no cap Mondays. That was March the 18th. And um, that was a dope night. It, it was dope. It, the band was, oh, man, superb. But we're going to check that out right quick. OK. Hey, I miss going to see you guys live. Yo, that was a crazy. You did you record that? That's that's yeah. your own personal recording. Yeah, yeah. See, you gotta be careful, man, because you don't know who's listening. Yeah, who's in the audience? You know, like you always got to put forth your best, your best effort. But um, yeah, that was a special night, and uh, No Cap Mondays was uh something that me and uh Ted Nagy shout out to uh. Jazz Cafe Music Hall. Um, we've been collaborators for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he hosted my album release party when I got my first record, uh, my first real record deal with mm -hmm. uh, Mac Avenue and uh, Detroit Music Factory. And yeah, man, so when I approached him, I said, man, there's really nothing going on on Mondays. Why don't we start a Monday night and you know, kind of mix it up. We can make it like a talk show, but it could be an open mic, but it could be this and it could be that. And um, we did it and I forget why we stopped, honestly. I, I, I can't recall what the reason was, but um, I think it was more like scheduling, you mm. know, and it was before all this COVID stuff happened. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> that was a special thing and it was growing. And of course I had, you know, a, a lot of special guests, um, like uh, Angela Davis, for example, um, who is hard to get a hold of, not because she's a diva or anything, but she's just so in demand. She's you know, busy. She's very busy. So, you know, you could catch her, you know, performing like a private event, you know, for somebody, or you might catch her on Ford Field or, you know, I singing. Think she's doing a virtual show right now. She's what? I think she's doing something tonight at Baker's. Oh, see? Exactly. Or she could be singing for like a hundred thousand people for like Manchester United, U of M. So right. she's like that kind of a talent and that type of an artist. So for me, you know, when I call in a favor, I'm like, hey, sis, can you come through? She never hesitates. She's like, all right, I'll figure it out. I'll make it work. And um, that particular night, yeah, we have fun. 
We definitely yeah, had a lot of that fun. Was, that was definitely fun. What's up, Larry? What's up, Jervis? What's up, Tawana? And what's up, God damn it, with Cheese TV? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so, so you have you have an album out right now called Viral. Tell me a little bit about that. Wow, Viral. So that project was inspired well, by I'm, the pandemic. I'm, I'm sorry, not Viral. That's the single. It's called Anti. No, you're right. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. Oh, okay. The, the name the name of this particular LP is Viral. You are okay. Correct. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Um. So yeah, no, no problem. But uh, the project itself is called Anti Philosophy, which is a, a newly minted collaboration between myself and a co-producer, a co-songwriter, um, co-genius uh, Sasha Kasperko, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, oh, plays the guitar. Man, Sasha is amazing. He Let's is. Let's make that really clear. Sasha Woo! is phenomenal. Yes, okay. he is. Very humble, very like, you know, low key, but he, that man's an alien. He is awesome. You heard it here first. He's an alien. There's something <laughs> wrong with him. Um, and, then, and then another thing, man, this is the guy who works with Kareem Riggins, you know, works with Common, works with, you know, all these other people. So yeah. um, I called him about a year, maybe two years ago to start working with my band uh, Nomadic. Which mm -hmm. was the band that hosts for um, No Cap Mondays, and um, yeah, you know he was new to the music and you know trying to figure out how to approach it. And we had a couple of tours, so he came with me to the West Coast. He came, we did some stuff in San Francisco, or L.A., or whatever. Uh, then we did a Midwest run, and on the Midwest run, we drove. So we hit Chicago, Minneapolis, a um, couple other cities. You know, the, the Midwest is, you know, down the street. <laughs> you know. Right. So so on that tour, we had a, an opportunity to really kind of get a better understanding of each other because everything up to that point was strictly music. There was no real conversation. And in talking to him, I found out that he's a very insightful, very thoughtful, very um, open-minded individual. Like, he has a big heart for people. And he mm -hmm. has a, a big heart for social justice. And he's an artist. He's a true artist. So um, I challenged him. I said, you know what? If you feel so passionately about your views, then you need to put it in your music. Mm -hmm. And if you don't use your artistic ability and utilize your music to propagate your message, then you might as well just shut up. Because what are you doing to affect change? Right. And he challenged me. He's like, well, what are you doing to affect change? And that was the beginning of anti-philosophy. That was literally the beginning of it. It was in my truck. I'm driving. He's sitting, you know, shotgun. And we're kind of, really, we're arguing. And it got kind of heated. And, you know, uh, anybody that knows me knows, like, I, not that, uh, not in a violent way, but I like conflict. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind conflict. I don't mind dissonance. Because I think something beautiful can come out of it on the other side. Right. right. And that's what this project is. So um, the pandemic hit us all, you know, like crazy. I mean, we don't have gigs. We don't know what to do. We don't know what's next. Blah, 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 blah. So we just started creating music, man. And that's what this project is. And this is volume one of 11. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're serious. Welcome, to. I'm gonna play just a little bit of viral. I'm not gonna play a whole bunch because you know these uh, websites be tripping. Oh, uh, they can't. They can't trip about this. This is a hundred percent original, made in Detroit. You can't. Uh. -uh. Yeah. They better not red flag this. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
viral. That is so dope. I, the the whole the whole project, man, is dope. Y'all, whoever's watching this, make sure it's on all digital platforms. Make sure you go check that out. Anti philosophy, the viral. That is is dope. Like the whole. Tell me tell me about that. Like I'm looking at the track names, and it's just so today. You know what I'm saying? It's so oh, yeah. right now. Oh yeah. Um. Well, like I said, it was a pandemic inspired project. So a uh, shout out to Tiffany, my sis, number love. I haven't seen you in forever. She's the only one that's got a nomadic hoodie. Shout out to her. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, this project, like you said, it feels very today because we made it yesterday, literally. <laughs> and we showed it to y'all today. You know what okay. I'm saying? It, it, it from you know, George Floyd being murdered in the street mm -hmm. and that's going out and protesting about that to um, everything that has been going on with, you know, the stimulus checks and what's been going on with this election. Yes. Um, you know, the, the food shortage, quote unquote, you know, um, just everything. We, we feel like there's a sound to accompany that. And honestly, <clears throat> you got to look at this project as more or less like a uh, like a sonic portrait. We're not necessarily creating music for the sake of music. We're literally creating what we see in music form. We're painting it. We're painting that picture, which is abstract, it might be distorted. It might be all these different things, but it's very much what happened right now. And uh, the actual picture that we have for our cover art is um, by uh, none other than the legendary Sheafy McFly. He okay. has murals all over the city, yeah. uh, soon to be, uh, you know, murals all over the world. And in my opinion, uh, I tell my wife this all the time, I, I consider him to be like a black Picasso. Like, you know, he is the future of art, in my opinion. And I love that everything that he does is so centered around the city of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? We both went to DSA, shout out to DSA, you know? Um, and it's just beautiful that there is a personal connection, uh, even down to the artwork. Uh, there's a personal connection with mm -hmm. the music. There's a personal connection with the message behind the music. Um, because once again, we talked about this idea of putting your protest in your art. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and ultimately, it's just an honest gesture. It's not something like, oh, we're going to win a Grammy for this or we're going to make a million dollars off of this project. No, no, no. We just we're literally making art for the sake of making it. And what's been amazing is the uh, overwhelming positive uh, positive response. Uh, people have been purchasing the album, uh, mm -hmm. been getting phone calls, text messages, DMs. I mean, you and I, we're doing this. I mean, it's just been the most unexpected positive response to the project. So it keeps us motivated to say, you know, I think we're, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going in the right path. And I'll say this and I'll kind of sum it up. But like when you work with Mike Banks, Underground Resistance, he's always telling you, you have to experiment and you need to find a way to push the music forward. And don't do what everybody else did before you find your lane and figure out the next move like what's the next sound and so when you think about what underground resistance means to detroit culture and electronic music culture and when you think about motown and how revolutionary motown was you gotta look both of these labels are on the same street right one's on east grand boulevard the other's on west grand boulevard but it's the same street same energy yeah. I feel like it's my responsibility to kind of continue to walk in that energy. And I, I, I hope that this project uh, in time, not right now, but as the years go by, I hope that people will look back on this project and say, yeah, this was definitely in that vein um, because we, we need something new. And this is like an experiment. Yeah. You know? It's a hit or miss. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a hit. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's a hit show. So you have on this on this um project you have a titles viral, social distancing, redlining, short supply, safer at home orders. 
what is that nomophobia yeah nomophobia the fear of being without your phone oh <laughs> let's listen to that right quick <laughs> okay what up tiff i see you hey let me see here <laughs> People are afraid to not be without to, to be without their phone. I tell you that. Look, I lost one of my phones trying to get ready for this, and I'm like spazzing out about it. The way that melody, -da 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 -da, that's what I'm like. I'm like, where's my phone? So, right. yeah. So you know, we, we've we we've been there. We've all been there before. But I think that they are plugging us in. It's really an interesting time where. You cannot be a functional member of society without a phone. Yeah. They have made it that way. Think about that. Yeah. You have to have your phone in order to be a functioning member of modern society. Mm. Ten years ago, it wasn't like that. No. No, not at all. I'm just saying. You could go, <laughs> you could go weeks without a phone and still be okay. Yeah. Look at John Dixon. Welcome, John Dixon. <laughs> yeah, people, I, I've been there too. You know, I've been there. I've left my phone and went to work, left it on the couch. And I'm just like, all day, you just feel awkward, weird, you know. I don't know nobody's number. I don't know how to, to log into this. Or, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the commentary behind that phone is more, um, look at me, Freud and Slip phone. Behind that song <laughs> is the fact that we are so programmed now and we're so attached to our technology that it's almost like we can't function without the technology. But the technology is nothing without us. Exactly. That's the part we forgot as a society. And they, they're, they're, they're slipping. They're slipping a lot. You know what they're doing? They're mashing up. Whatever the chemical is they want to put in the mashed potatoes or they want to put it in the applesauce and then spoon feeding it to us and we're just eating it up. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. my philosophy. That's my personal philosophy. So we just got to be careful, man. We just, yeah. you know, pay attention. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, by, by the time we get to volume 11, you will have a very clear understanding of what me and Sasha are trying to say. Okay. Interviews aside, you'll you'll okay. you will definitely be like, okay, I see what these two brothers was talking about. Okay. Yeah, Sasha is dope. Um, so you you are a producer and an educator. Th tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, on the production side, you just heard uh some of the music that uh you know our producer co-produced in this case with Sasha. Um as a producer. Um, I work with a lot of different artists, mainly in Detroit. Um, I'm more of a jazz composer, I would say. I, not even a jazz composer. I'm definitely a composer. Mm -hmm. um, I love orchestral scores. I love you know jazz standards. I love gospel. I love all that stuff. So a lot of the opportunities I've had as a composer really come in the form of an arranger. Um, so I've worked with, uh, the Clark sisters, the legendary Clark sisters, that's family right there. Yeah. Uh, Kiera Shear, Jeju Shear, the, those are like my brothers and sisters, like in real life. And, um, I've been really fortunate to have been working with them for like 
I don't know, better part of 20 years now, which is wow. crazy when you think about it like that. Yeah. Um, you know, been Grammy nominated. Um, hopefully we get the win this year. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because we got two projects out right now. Uh, one with the Clark Sisters, uh, the Return of the Clark Sisters, and then one with Kiera. Um, you know, so I've done a lot of horn arrangements, um, which is a form of composition. Um, as an educator, I, I started a program with uh, with my band Nomadic called Nomadic Outreach. Mm -hmm. And uh, John can attest to this. Uh, we used to go to a spot in the middle of nowhere called Mexico, Missouri. Have you ever heard of Mexico, Missouri? I have not. We went, I think it was three years in a row. And we would do music workshops for elementary, middle school, high school, and colleges. We would, we would oh. camp out for a week and just do nonstop music related workshops. And it was always college preparatory. The idea was to teach these young students how to capitalize on free grants and uh, you know financial scholarships and things of that nature that are widely available, but not widely talked about. Mm. Oh my God, John got jokes. John said, uh, don't forget your performance live arrangement with Amsterdam drummer guy. Okay, so let me tell you something about John Dixon, who's a very close uh, friend, collaborator, amazing producer. Uh, he and I, we've traveled the world together and we have, you know, spoke at like the Rio Music Conference in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Red Bull M uh, Music Academy in, uh, I believe that was Melbourne, Melbourne Australia. Um, we've played literally all over the world for the past 14, 15 years together. And um, we've taught with Michigan State, um, which we were co-workers for about three years. He's still teaching there today. Um, we've done lectures for U of M. I've done lectures at various colleges, uh, University of Utah, Oberlin Conservatory, um, taught for what, four or five years at Berkeley in, uh, in Oakland, California. Um, so I've been, I've been teaching for a while. I might not look like it. I might not look like a traditional educator, but, um, <laughs> so what? <laughs> right right that don't matter that don't matter that's yeah. awesome so you just you just been you've been out here doing the dang thing yeah, music is cool. my hustle. yeah i love it i love it it's like it's like you're in the background in the forefront you know you just you all right there you know yeah um, what's been what's been some of the things that that you've had challenges with in in your career the greatest challenge I have endured over the course of my career is being an independent thinker. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest challenge because like what I see and where I want to go, everybody that might be in the room might not see it the same way and might not be inclined to go with me. Right. So that's why you gotta, you gotta keep a John Dixon, you know, in, in your camp because John will, he'll run with you. He'll be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> you got to keep uh, Ashton Thomas, who is an amazing drummer from, uh, from Cleveland area, really from Lorraine, Ohio, but like people that actually see the vision. So the greatest challenge for me, and it's been a blessing though, is having to literally build what I want to see happen from the ground up. If I want to publish a certain type of music, then I need to build my own label. And I need to create a band and find the right people that are going to execute this sound and I'm going to put it out. If I want to create opportunities to travel, I might have to start my own booking agency. If I want to, you know, get deals and everything, I might have to bring deals to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like the first record deal I had, it was actually a label to label agreement, which was cool and it's great. And it still benefited me to this day um, in terms of those, uh, you know, those royalty statements, but I believe heavily in just, you know, creating your own lane. I, I feel like unapologetically that is, you know, I don't feel like I've been given anything in this industry and it's really hard to maintain longevity in the music business. Yeah. And it's really hard to maintain a living. Like I got, I got a family of five to feed. So, you know what I'm saying? Like my right. hustle has to be, 
very wide. I got to cast a wide net. It can't just be about playing gigs mm -hmm. or it can't just be about releasing music. It can't just be about teaching. Like it has to be a uh, sum of all the parts. But I've been very blessed and very fortunate to have amazing relationships uh, from the mentors I talked about with like Mike Banks and Marcus Belgrave to having close relationships with people like John Dixon and mm -hmm. Jeju Sheard and Kira Sheard. Like if I call them, they'll pick up the phone. And it doesn't have to be on some music. It could just be about anything. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been fortunate to surround myself with people who are better than me in areas that I want to get better at. Right. So I'm forced to grow. Like, I, don't, I feel like if you surround yourself with people who you're consistently doing better than, you're not going to grow. If you, if you can't put your ego aside and say, you know what, I have some skills, I have some deficits, I have so much I need to learn. Right. And surround yourself, like, look for people who are doing better than you. Look for, if you want to learn how to get money, learn from people who get money, who really get money. Right. Don't be, don't be ashamed to be like, you know what, man, I shoot, I, I didn't make 10 grand today. I didn't make, whatever the situation is, I'm just saying. Find people that you can, what I say, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. And I think like, once you, you only need two or three people like that in your camp for you to benefit long-term. And uh, like a lot of the relationships I'm talking to you about, you mm -hmm. know, they're, you know, 10, 15, 20 year relationships. Yeah. And there's only a handful of people that I can really name like that, you know? Right. right. They're over here talking about some speak and preach. Tiffany called you Reverend earlier. <laughs> called me Rev. You know, my mom would appreciate that. She swears I've been called to preach. I said, ah, 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 hold up. <laughs> Hold up, man. I'll play maybe, but that's about it. I'll play behind the preacher. Look, tell me about this project. tell me about this project with um with Kiara Sheard. Something has to break. Man, who would have knew that project blew up and came at the right time? Mm -hmm. It just it was released at the right time. It came at the height of the pandemic. So wow. when people were really going through the unknown myself included um the video that i sent you i mean it's got uh it's got like five or six million views on it right now we can check that out a little bit if you want fine uh oh. i did a, arrangements on it and god willing will get a grammy for it or some kind of uh honorable mention it's already uh picking up awards which is great wow. but um it's a special project and it was a live recording. We did it at uh, the old Greater Grace, you know, at Greater Emanuel, uh, right there off of Seven Miles Schaefer. And um, it's just, I don't know, Kiara is special, man. Let's just yeah. be really clear. She is not a dime a dozen talent vocalist. She's not your every, there's something, whatever. She's amazing. And that's all, <laughs> I have to say. all right, let's check this out. <laughs> All right, hold on one second. John, leave some more comments. Delivery, I chose the vegetarian box and the meals that I received. Good old commercials. I don't mind them commercials. Hey, y'all, it's me, Key, and I'm getting ready to worship quarantine style with some family and friends. Anisha, yeah. are you there? Hey. Tyrone, are you there? Good. Drea, Shelby, are you there? Um, Marcus Johnson, Mark J, are you in the building or what? At home? Um, Chalita, are you there? Adia, are you there? Hey, here. Yeah. Tony, Uncle Snoop, Harry, what about Brooks? You there? Deshaun Jones. Hey. Yeah. And now. That was before I got my braids. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Something has to break in your life. We're in this together, so we're worshiping and making it fun. Here we are. Yeah.
Video. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna play it all. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's like a seven minute video, but a lot of people, you know, were touched by this record. Yeah, that was that was an amazing project, like for real. Like I, Yeah, that whole album is fire. Yeah. That whole album is fire. So absolutely amazing. And shout out to Karu, you know, another homegrown label, mm -hmm. um, pushing the music forward. I mean, they kept they kept a lot of people working during the pandemic, man, which was amazing because we did all these um these live streams, you know. Mm -hmm. multiple ones so it, it it was amazing to see the amount of determination the amount of care i mean my first COVID test was because of those productions you know my first round of COVID testing you know mm -hmm. like the level of care and attention to detail that they had with each production just was it taught me a lot that's what yeah. i'm saying you got to surround yourself with people that are better than you Yes, and, and and I say that with with all humility and the utmost and pride. Like I know what I I know what I can do, but I also know what I can't do. Right, that's important. And so now, when you watch somebody in their process, and it's a successful process, what do you do? You take notes. Right. You study. You learn. Receive. Receive the information. So when it becomes your time to do it, you can execute. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Keen, shout out to Karu, shout out to J. Drew, the whole fam, man. They're doing amazing work this year, as as usual, honestly. Man, definitely. But you know I can't wait to go back in time right quick, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, I did, I, I'm going to just play a little bit. And I go know for it. Anybody that's watching this, if you if you're from Detroit, it, 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 even if you're not from Detroit, it's gonna make you move. It's gonna make your body move because it's a classic. And um, I had no idea that you had any part in this. Like I was tripping. I, I had to put more blistex on. My lips had dried. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, not the blistex. All right, but check out, check this out. I don't even have to give it no introduction. Took me back. I just I, I was in my room acting like I was gonna do dad show, man. Hey <laughs> man, tell yeah. me, tell me about that project. So, so underground resistance. Um, that that's that's you are all day. And um 
I am actually a part of the namesake group timeline, which features myself, DJ Mark Flash on the ones and twos, uh, Matt Mike Banks on keys and auxiliaries, and John Dixon, um, who is also on keys and auxiliaries. And I'm playing saxophone and ewe and all these different things to create these sounds. And um, timeline was the offshoot of another group called Galaxy to Galaxy, mm -hmm. which was like a 10, 12 piece group. I mean, it was basically like your only completely live electronic band where like every part was played with live musicians. Shout out to Ray Seven, uh, legendary producer, legendary musician. Um, we, we, we love him, man. He, he's, he's one of the true soldiers of you are. And, um, yeah, man. So we we got a lot of history uh, within the camp, and there's other people that are in the camp that I'm still collaborating uh, collaborating with to this day, like uh, Wajid, who I know I sent you one of those tracks. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, you are as a family. It's a, a close knit family of producers uh, and good brothers, man. And it has spawned a couple crazy labels. Um, you know, Detroit Techno Militia, shout out to, uh, well, not Detroit Techno Militia, I'm talking about uh, Detroit Funk Association. That's what it's called. That's what I was actually meaning to say for Mark Flash. But I was thinking about Detroit Techno Militia because they're also like a sister organization. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Forever Forward, you know, that's John Dixon's label, Nomadic, that's my label. Um, and there's just a lot of imprints that have fallen under the umbrella of underground resistance so yeah that's deep history and that record ain't going nowhere timeline is here to stay forever okay yeah oh yeah. goodness forever yeah but shout out to yg because at this point he's one of the front runners for the culture and for the city of detroit and for this music um you know dirt tech wreck that's his label um he also started a new um a new school called Underground Music Academy, which mm -hmm. is literally on the corner of Brush and the Boulevard. And um, yeah, it's it's very future forward, very, um, I don't know, man, I can't really put it on to words, but I know he he's a guy that's the bridging of the gap between techno and hip hop because he's the DJ for Slum Village. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's the guy that works one-on-one -on -one with Jay Dilla but also works one-on-one -on -one with Mike Banks. And now he's working one-on-one -on -one with the cats like myself or John Dixon or, or anybody else in the city who has uh, got something to say musically. So uh, yeah. I really attribute him as being like my current mentor, you know, for sure. He, he's teaching me a lot about the game. That's what's up. And then that, that one for uh, YG, that's my father's rhythm? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. We got time to play a little. Okay. Yeah. I love to hear the build in the different instruments. And that that man, my shoulders are bending fell off. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You you um this I, I I've enjoyed talking to you for real because uh I've I've learned a lot. Learned a lot, learned a lot. Didn't know some stuff, you know. Uh, I hope it wasn't too bad. I hope oh, it wasn't no. shocking revelation. No, amazing. 2020 has been bad enough. 
Hey, this, this, this has been out of 2020. This has been the part of 2020 that has helped me get through 2020. Right. You know, being able to talk to all, all these talented folks. I mean, y'all, it's some whoo, some talent in this city. And um, that was that was why I made it. What that was why I even started this whole thing because I'm just amazed at you guys. And I want I want to I want to put put you on on spot. You know, like hey, look at this. Look at you know, I you know even if, even if I'm learning about somebody after they've been out for a while, somebody else is learning from me about that person. So yeah. Well, we appreciate you. I mean, it's got to be done from within the culture. I wouldn't want somebody else coming to me and saying, hey, what's, you know, I, I really appreciate this. So, you know, what you're doing is really important and um, I want to support it any way I can. So thank you for having me. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So out of all the people um, who who have you not done a collaboration with that you would like to? Um. Honestly, I want to collaborate with Herbie Hancock. I want to collaborate with Future. And man, who else? Who who do I really want to collaborate with? And I want to collaborate with the DSO. I want to collaborate. I got some music for y'all. Y'all hear that? I want to collaborate with the DSO. I don't want to go to no other symphony orchestra. I want to work because I have history with them as well. Okay. You know, shout out to Civic Jazz Orchestra. I was in a program, a civic uh, music program that actually got me started in a very real way. So, you know, I spend a lot of time at the DSO, you know, two, three days a week okay. coming up. So I've seen it go through some changes through the years and, uh, I'm really pleased to see the direction that's going on now where you're doing more uh, collaborations um, outside of the classical idiom and getting more into black culture and black music and making sure that there's a platform for us to shine on those stages and in yeah. those spaces. So, um, yeah, I, I want to do some of the DSO, honestly. And I feel like all other collaborations will fall in line from there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a random know. thing, though, right? Like, who who would say that? Like, yeah, I want to work. Hey, with you. but that, that's I think that would be dope. That would be really dope. Seriously, could you imagine anti philosophy with the DSO? <sighs> exactly. That would, that would be lit. That would be lit. You see seriously. what I'm saying? really would like it's time to do something different man it's yeah time. But you know what? when they had nas come through uh last year right i think it was last year. i don't know i'm i'm it's a blur <laughs> right anyway that's what i'm talking about those types of collaborations yeah you know? yeah or like the jp beyonce like thing that would be crazy oh that would be wild that Why? would be wild. it's so Why? funny you said herbie hancock because um, when I was a little child, that was my first uh, watermelon man. Was my first. Yeah. Oh man, the way that the way that music builds, it just it took me. And I was a, I was literally like maybe I don't know seven eight years old down in the basement mm -hmm. listening to records. Amazing. See, I'm Amazing. trying to get the culture back to that. You know. Listening to records. Shout out to Archer, who's keeping the record and vinyl business alive and well. I you love your vinyl, though. Well, you know, this is going to be on vinyl. This will be available, hopefully, at the top of next year, uh, Anti-Philosophy. So oh, when it comes it. out, you get a personal, maybe not hand-delivered copy, but I want to make sure that you get your copy. It'll be signed, everything. Uh, for having cool. me on the show and um yeah that'll be for you i might even just frame it for you i might have to give you like two one and you then can I, I, I could play it on, on my record player back there hey <laughs> oh and uh be on the lookout for a project uh collaboration between um yours truly and angela davis yeah. like i was telling you before um she's got some vinyl coming out next year uh with nomadic records so that should be cool and um there's actually one more song that I wanted you to play. 
What's that? Which is a collaboration between myself and Idea, who is one of my all time favorite vocalists in the city. Oh my gosh, shut it down. Good night. She is crazy. And uh, I put out this project, I think it was uh, 2017. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, this, this song is called Pressure. Okay. Yeah, it's off of the self titled uh, project, Nomadic. All right, let's check out Pressure. Yeah, idea is dope. studio in like what felt like 20 seconds really all right i'm ready to record what i was like her level of genius it's not just her talent the woman is a lyrical genius wow she wrote that so quick man i said okay all right so um i'm actually gonna drop that on vinyl as well um Okay. I got a I got a remix of that from John Dixon and a couple other remixes. That I'm gonna drop that that particular song. It just resonates with me, man. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But yeah, we Shout gotta keep to it. The finals. Yeah, we 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 back. I mean, at this point, because if we keep streaming music, musicians lose yeah, in the long run. We do. We we're not making money. Uh, the Spotify's and the YouTube's they have their select few. But man, those algorithms are not designed for us to make money. It's designed for those companies to become multi-billion-dollar businesses, right? By volume of interaction and volume of the proliferation of content. Except, why should I give away my art for free? Exactly. No, I'm I'm not interested. And YouTube, Spotify, all you guys you want to sit down and have a conversation, cool. But if not, man, I've learned from the best on how to stay independent. And how to how to maneuver, man. That's that's really what I think we have. We have a strong backbone to do it ourselves. Right. But you know, I'll play nice for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't get me started. You. I'll get fired up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I appreciate you, Mr. Jones. Yo, thank you for having me. This has been a blast. This has been amazing. Welcome and back to time. And uh I'm I'm gonna go listen to this music some more. <laughs> Well, I get yeah. ready for the evening, you know. Um, right. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you're amazing, amazing artist, made, amazing producer. Uh, keep it up, man. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. I'll definitely keep you in the know. I'll give you a heads up, like anything that I'm releasing. Um, not necessarily to be back on the show, but just so that you know. Yeah. Uh, what it is. If you find anybody, you know, they hit you in the comments or DMs, they're like, hey, where can we find this music? Uh, you know, you can find uh, Anti Philosophy, and actually, the the track that we just played, you can find that on uh, Bandcamp, which is the best of all of them, right? Yeah. In terms of yeah. the digital streaming sites. So, um, I I don't know if you got the link in your bio, but yeah. if not, the link is in the bio for Bandcamp. The link is in the bio uh, for the Kiara Sheard video, and just check the bio. Check the whole link. Is uh, it's a, a bunch of information in there in regards to Mr. Jones and what he does, and 
yeah, check it out. Click on it. Purchase. Stream. Support. Support these artists for real. And uh, again, I thank you very much, sir. I appreciate thank you. It. And thank I'll, you. I'll be talking to you. All right. All right. Well, till the next time.